Hey everybody, welcome to Game Devs Play Games, where we play games and talk game design, but today Woo. we're talking a little bit more than game design because, well, first of all, we're playing The Song of Seven, Chapter One, Overture, uh, but what's even cooler is we actually have Eric Bloomquist here. Hey! Which, if you don't guy. know who he is, he's the reason this game happened. Thanks for having me on, guys. I'm really, really excited to be here. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so before we jump in, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, oh. what, what, what exactly was your role on this project? So, you get a lot um, of hats, I, I know. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, but I, I definitely had help. Um, about three and a half years ago, I was working as an animator and uh, modeler for an indust industry company where we would make little avatars of animated characters. And, you know, so I was doing really well, doing animation. And uh, I watched uh, some game documentaries one day, and I was like, I can do this. <laughs> it took me three and a half years, but I, yeah. So that's then you're also probably yeah. the reason that this game is so beautiful. Uh, part of. I'm, oh, okay. I'm, half, I'm half of that reason. <laughs> um, Nathan Grove uh, is my, my second half when it comes to the art. Um, I do all the, the art direction and the color keys and then, uh, you know, basically gray box and set everything up and then he does the models and, and you know, the two of us light it together and yeah. That sounds awesome. Very cool. Yeah. So let's jump in. It's a good marriage. So this, this series is going to be a little bit different. Oh wait, did I just say continue? I hope not. No. Okay, good. You did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did new game. Okay, cool. So yeah, this series for any of you guys watching, um, is going to be a little bit different than normal because normally everything is very game design focused. But instead of us speculating about what you know the developers' intentions were for a lot it's of things, it's going to be game designer focused. Yeah. Ooh. Ah, ah. I saw. I see what I'll you be doing. here all day. That was but, good. But we're we're <laughs> we're definitely going to keep things a little casual too. We we would very much like to hear kind of about you and about the development of the game and uh and I guess even your experience as a game developer and kind of like share stories and whatnot so yeah so uh this is a nice tv by the way this is this, this, <laughs> this game looks it looks better than it does at my house i'm glad you point this out though because half the time <laughs> when i'm uh whenever we're playing something and it's probably gonna happen in this too whenever there's dialogue i'm sitting there squinting at it barely able to read it and start stuttering over my own words <laughs> well that's that's actually a huge problem with a lot of games that we play in uh 1080p is is that like it doesn't scale well and oh, like yeah. the text will be very very tiny but it's like the screen is it can render in 1080p but i still can't read it so um real quick let's talk about uh the tutorial cuz i or almost... even just the game mechanics in general yeah i okay. i'm so so this is pretty familiar what we see in a lot of like point and click adventure games but notice my hands off the mouse there's no right you uh, control with the WSAD keys, um, but then you are able to, you know, manipulate and interact with the world with the mouse. Mm -hmm. um, it, the reason why we did that is the mouse is so intuitive um, for control. It feels snappy. You know, we we were doing it with the controller at first, which I'll which we're going back to, and I'll I'll get to that eventually. Um, I was wondering about that. Yeah, actually. it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> um, but I wanted the the world that I wanted to design and for you to actually explore. I wanted it to be in full 3D. You know, I didn't want it to be a bunch of static cameras, and you know, I wanted the player to actually be more engrossed into that world. Um, so everything's designed that way. We did mess around with a little, like actually just making him point and click. But the way that the worlds were designed, it just didn't feel. It worked in some areas, but then. I know, like as you get later on, there's certain areas where it just it it would be a total yeah. nightmare to play I, that way. Absolutely, I, I think um, one thing I find interesting is you have a lot of fun with static cameras. I do. Or semi-static, <laughs> right? Like they'll be static until like you hit a point, and then they have this transitional sequence. The camera work is that's all me. That's that's something I definitely take a lot of pride I, in. I really like that though. Thank like you. you don't see a lot of games these days that use static cameras or use them well. I um, love static cameras <laughs> because it's like. <laughs> You can't, uh, the, I think what the most difficult thing is as a game designer is that like how someone else interacts with it is, can differ completely. But if I say, this is the shot, this is how you're going to see it. And it'll vary a little bit from here and there, but I can set the composition exactly the way that I want it to be seen. Imagine if you designed a first person shooter game, every, or just a first person game in general, every shot that you look around has to be compositionally interesting. And that changes the workflow completely for a designer. 
Absolutely. It gives you a lot more, like, sort of artistic and creative control, too. Yes. Which I think that's that's something I miss from a lot of classic games. Like, even Resident Evil, while that's a very different game from this, like... Right. It used that to create more stressful um, and even more cinematic moments in that game. Mm-hmm. And, like... This game is not stressful like that. But, <laughs> the opposite is stressful. Uh, but like, <laughs> but in that same, the like flip of the coin, right? Like you can use that to kind of like accentuate like the beauty of the world yes. and make things seem more peaceful than it might have had you free control. Yeah, and but there there actually are, um, you know, no spoilers, but there are actually some <laughs> you know uh, scary parts of this game much later on. That caught me by surprise. Did it? By the way, <laughs> oh, when it happened, I was like. Did this game just like go Pony Island on me, and where everything is just going to be horrible? And, and there, are, there, are, there are one or two major transitions in the tone of the game, which which catch you by surprise, and it's pretty awesome. Um, so speaking of tone, real quick, I wanted to actually talk about uh, how much I love that he hates this ladder and grows a relationship with it. Yeah. Did you actually finish it? Yes, I did. Oh, awesome! Oh, yeah, yeah. oh very yeah, cool, very cool. I was if you finished or not. So that was uh, something I wanted to do. Is I wanted to show his gr- like his growth in general is the major thing. Can you actually have Kiba point forward real quick? So right there, character design, right? Just as you're pointing out, just like the way he's standing, it just immediately reminded me of like every boy when he's in his like young teens, etc. Like an angsty teenager, yeah. yeah. And the moment I saw that, I was like, I cannot wait for the moment where he's no longer clasping his own arm like that. Like that is, I looked for, I looked for that in the game. The moment I saw that's, that, and you, you notice it. That's really yes, cool. I yeah. wasn't sure if very people were going to notice that. Very first thing I picked up on, I was like, I cannot wait for the moment because it's showing his insecurity in a, in a lot of ways, and and how that you get to see how this character grows, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm, obviously that's like character growth very important to me. So I just wanted to point out like. Good Thank stuff. you. Yeah, <laughs> the the whole game, uh, it all started. I I uh, studied a lot of like Eastern spirituality and just spirituality in general. Mm. Like, just I'm very fascinated by the human growth. You know, d- d- you know, no matter where you come from, you know, whether your your sexuality, or your gender, or where you were born, or what time period. It's like we all. I feel like we all have this core commonality between all of us, mm. and I wanted to create something that someone could relate to no matter who they were, you know, not to say that I was trying to make something for everyone, you know, but you know, that they could potentially connect with it just because they're a human being. Yeah. Um, so the, the basis of everything is all is from, uh, the seven chakras of Hinduism. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So the first chapter is all about the, the first, the root chakra. So it's all about facing your fears and, um, you know, your relationship with your tribe so the relationships between your family and your extended family and sort of like even, where you come from. Well, it even um, really shows, like, we'll see this a lot later, but it even is present in the tribe itself. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, wow. and, and also uh, your boundaries, not only like someone without boundaries or someone with too many boundaries. So each chapter is all about not only, um, you know, tackling these themes, but kind of balancing them and, and sort of, you know, that's the basis. I mean, it's in a, but in a fantasy world, you I, know. Yeah, you get to see, and it's it, not only the balance, but the relationship between those lack of boundaries or too many boundaries and right. how they actually intertwine. And speaking of which, right now, for any of you guys, if you've been reading this, um, talking to you viewers, um, basically <laughs> the conversation happening right now is actually about how the the wall in the village has broken. Oops. Um, and so basically they're kind of talking about how, like, this is a huge danger, right? Like, with this, if this wall is broken, disease is going to get in or who knows what. And, you know, and worst of all, like, our... our character's dad is sick so he can't do anything he's bedridden um so this is like this is getting the momentum rolling on exactly what you were just talking about yes so i mean this is the the first chapter is all one big metaphor for the experiences that i had with anxiety and depression Mm. when i was in my you know early 20s and and breaking out from those those patterns and how life sort of gave me the choice to either face face them and become the person that i am capable of being or to just completely fall into the hole and you know never make mm. it out and that's literally what this game is that's pretty pretty uh deep and personal but <laughs> it is it is a very it's, very personal and game spot on too it, and, and you'll you'll see it as it goes along too yeah in, in a way like that's i think what makes a lot of indie games truly great yes is, is that personal touch 
I think that was like the biggest thing is I just want to create something um, not only because games for me and I'm sure you guys can attest to this as well is games have, have gotten me through a lot of hard times or they've made me contemplate different aspects of my life or whatever or and even entertainment not just you know just games itself yeah. but I wanted to create something you know for someone else and that's to like, have that similar experience mm-hmm even if it's just kind of like, sorry. You can, no, you know. no, no, no. <laughs> uh, you know, even if it's just like, you know, something to take their mind off of a, a bad day or maybe they're having a good day and they just want to make it even better, you know, whatever. <laughs> so at this point in the game, we get to just kind of run around and, I mean, our, our objective is to make this tonic for our dad mm-hmm. so we can help him not be sick. Um, but we also are now given the opportunity to just kind of like walk around and, and talk to all the people in the village and kind of get a feel for like what this, what our setting even is. So uh, this this whole section was an incredible design challenge. I imagine, especially because you have to fit a lot of content in such a little area. Yep. Um, that and the fact that it's supposed to feel sort of mundane. But how do you make something feel mundane but also still be entertaining? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty that fair. Was, that took a lot of tweaking. It's much easier when you can just look at something and say magic potion, but in this instance, just as you said, taking the mundane and having to make that work. I mean, your character has to find a bottle. That's kind of that's right. a challenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, and it's, it's, you know, we were kind of speaking earlier about, uh, you know, other adventure games and how... You know, someone like Tim Schafer, he likes to create like a wacky story from when you solve a puzzle. It's like, oh man, I, I used, uh, you know, this shark, I ripped a shark tooth out of his, you know, the shark, and then I use it as a key for this door. And, right. you know, you and I, I like that um, in a sense, but at the same time, those puzzles can be so weird that they don't feel satisfying because you're like, I never would have figured that out. Yeah, like, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there needs how... to be a certain real world logic. To yes. It. And if, if you don't have that, then it makes. OK, real quick. This right here. I wanted to talk. Okay, <laughs> uh, so, that's exactly what I was waiting thank for. Thank you for too. stopping. Uh, <laughs> yes. No, just OK. So there, there's a mechanic in a game where when you hit certain points, uh, you're allowed to, um, if you want, watch a dialogue scene between two characters or multiple characters that are not in the presence of the character you're playing at the time. Yes. And so in this re- exact instance, we're watching the two parents talk about the kid. Now, if if Keeble was there, obviously this conversation wouldn't be happening. So you're giving the player the opportunity to see um, other people's thoughts that do or do not relate to the to the to the main character when they're not around. So. Why did you? Why, uh, what, what was the inspiration? Yeah, I guess for then. What was the inspiration? Then? How did you come up with that? So uh, I didn't. Uh, the yeah. the inspiration came from Final Fantasy IX. Oh. There is a system called, and I'm I think it's ATB. I, no, wait, that's Attack. Oh gosh, I can't remember the the acronym. I think for I it. know what you're talking but it's, about. But it was the you exact like same thing. It was or something. Yeah, when... the the game would allow you to sort of switch to other characters and see what they were doing outside of the the main characters. And I always loved that because it just like made it made it more than just the main character. You know, like this isn't just a story of growth about the main character. I mean, you're kind of looking through his point of view, but it's more about everyone, you know, and every chapter moving forward is going to be about everyone that you come in contact with. It's not just about his, you know, path to enlightenment. It's it's everyone. It's you know, trying to affect the world in a positive way. And one of the biggest things that we wanted to stay away from was giving him sort of the, you know, the one complex. And that's something that we're trying very, very hard to stay away from. But it's difficult. When you you control one person who is affecting all these different things, it is incredibly difficult for that not to happen. That makes sense. But we are are trying our best to not make it feel that way. I think it adds a lot of value to the narrative, though. Because, like, that's a a storytelling tool that... Uh, I, I, I think you you use a lot of storytelling tools in this game actually sure. that like you don't get a get in a lot of games you it's none of it's forced right like seeing those ext- those like cut scenes that happen without the main character or even like uh, going up to an uh, like that portal the like a uh, toilet that I forget what they call when they're the outhouse outhouse thank you yeah. going to the outhouse and just like interacting with that and seeing like what someone says that's in there it's like that adds. Um, depth to the world without like forcing it on the players. Yeah, thank you. I, I, that's really cool. It's so interesting to hear people's thoughts because it's like 
you know, you're when you're a developer, it's just like you in front of your computer for years. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah. and it's really cool to hear someone's reaction to something that sometimes I did subconsciously. And, and didn't even put like my full thought into it. But when someone else picks up on it, I was like, well, yeah, I did do that. But I wasn't really like trying, but I did. I don't know if that makes yeah, sense. No, <laughs> just because it's not necessarily your original or main intent. Doesn't yeah. Doesn't mean that it wasn't like a, the byproduct was completely a coincidence mm -hmm. in that regard. So we got a bucket and just fixed the hole uh, in it. Yes. So we can use the bucket. Um, so I think that's all we have for this episode. We actually went a little long because we didn't set our timer, but... <laughs> Professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, question of the day, though. I feel like there's a lot we could talk about, um, but I think maybe focusing on the narrative, even though we didn't read a lot of the, the dialogue. Um, well, maybe not. I don't know. Do you want to talk about the mechanics? We could talk about a lot of things right now. There's a lot of things we could bring up. Uh, let's do... Um, I guess let's... So if you don't know, this is a thing that we do at the end of oh. every single episode where we we pose a design-related question to you guys, the audience. Um, and basically, it's our way to get you guys to like talk to us in the comments and kind of share your opinions on the game, um, but also like kind of discuss design stuff. Um, because whether you use it as like a challenge to further your own design skills or you just want to be part of the conversation, it, it's uh, it, an open invitation, basically. <laughs> And then you get to watch this guy put me on a spot, and for some reason I'm the one coming up with the questions. Uh, so so the actually, question? let's talk about the. We're going to talk about the the subtleties of of your narrative, because narrative is not necessarily uh, like dialogue, right? That's just one form of the mm. narrative. There's a constant Ooh, yeah, I like that. That's cool. misconception most of the time for that. But narrative as a whole is you mm. this story and, and its grand picture. So the subtleties of the narrative so far, we've seen things like the ability to watch um, side dialogue happen. We've seen the character, the main character's stance when he's not moving. Uh, we've mm -hmm. seen other characters and how they talk to them. So I guess the question of the day revolving around that is, um, if, if, with it, with uh, uh, Song of Seven here, what other, what other forms of that subtlety of narrative have you picked up on that you actually really appreciated? And what other, in possible other games, have you seen that form of subtle narrative that actually you really appreciated? It's a very long question of the day. That is but... really <laughs> As usual, I come up with like this, and then he'll do the the shortening of the question down below, and then you get to. We need a one thousand word thesis. <laughs> Some, some, you know some, of these, some of these guys give us really, really, really. awesome and well thought out, lengthy uh, responses. That's great. I think I think game design in itself is still a completely nebulous topic. Absolutely. I don't think I don't think we've even scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. Not in the least bit. <laughs> I think we're just kind of like, ah, oh, ooh, that makes sense, and maybe this is good. I mean, it's still a really young medium. You know, I think we're all yeah. just kind of figuring it out, and that it's a really exciting time to be a part of games because it's it's accessible, and we you know. Tools aren't super overly expensive anymore or sometimes free and it's very cool. It's a good time. And it's still very new. We're all floating on driftwood. Nobody's figured out how to build a boat yet. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank Except you for, for watching. Blow. Thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, we're going to keep playing this for at least a few more episodes. I mean, you'll, you'll know because it'll have a health bar, but uh, be and sure. And our clothes will be the same. Well, that's true, too. True. Uh, but be sure to Change check out... shirts throughout. <laughs> I'll be the only one, and everybody will be wondering what's going on with you two. We've, we've talked about it as a, as a thing. Like, maybe if we ever record, like, 20 episodes in one day. Nah. Just get a whole wardrobe. If, if we do a daily show... We'll see you guys like next a... time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>